Sauce. Yeah. They got they got a little sauce, huh? Yeah. I hear you weren't born with it. It was sauce. like, you know. George, when, I was not born with the sauce. You gotta acquire this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't be born all this song. <laughs> you gotta try it. Yo, he nah. is fucked up. You, you gotta, gotta acquire this. You gotta acquire this house. Look at this. You, know, you gonna be born with all this. It's hell. I've been bringing the heat all day. Oh, God. I'm trying to do the intro, man. You know what I'm saying? You won't shut up, man. That's what happens. You, you got me on that longevity labs. <laughs> Whatever you put in that drink, it works. That's what I'm talking <laughs> he about. Up. I'm working on something new. <laughs> too turned up, man. I've been fired up like this since 11 a.m. You listen to that Drake? I'm too turned up. <laughs> <laughs> you see the one with Wesley Slice? And he said, he ain't, I ain't paid my taxes in months. I'm too turned up. They said, Wesley felt that shit. <laughs> Count Blackula. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we in Chicago at the Chicago Barbell Compound. Man, this is in the building. It's King George, right here. We back with another episode of the King's Court. Man, this what's up, man. You on 10, man. This is my hometown. This is my home gym. They're tired. I ain't this, tired. I ain't say that. This, 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 is, this is just another Monday, another Tuesday, another Wednesday. This is, this is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I've been having fun since I've been here. I can't say so. You guys ever get a chance? Stop at Chicago. Stop at the Barbell Compound. Man, it's a nice gym. You know, it's a hardcore gym. If you want to train hard, get some work done right here. It's where you need to be. But let's get things kicked off, and let's talk about you know the culture of things right now. Mm. You know, uh, we we look at the origins of bodybuilding, right? We go way back to the mecca out on the West Coast and Frank. Uh, you had Pal uh, uh, Palumbo, you had Arnold, you had all these guys competing against each other, but they trained together constantly. They pushed each other. Um, they made each other better. The only time they were against each other was, was a there. few days before yeah. when, when Arnold would start playing mind games with everybody and then when they got on stage. And after that, literally the night and the next day they were back together like one big happy family. That's gone. That's dead. That we just that doesn't exist anymore. Um, it's become a very individual setting. Um, I think you get a lot of guys who pretend like there's a lot of camaraderie there. Uh, I don't see it. Um, I think it's far and few between. Guys don't train together very much anymore. You've got uh, Eddie Brockmani and Sergio Oliva Jr. out on the West Coast in San Diego. They train together as bodybuilders. Uh, Anthony Gilkis and, and, and Mike, Mike Lawhorn yeah, Mike, uh, out on the East Coast in New York. They, they get to train together quite a bit. I heard Akeem had stopped in and, and, and got in a session or two with them. But other than that, guys are just, they're all over the place. Nobody really lives that close to each other. And so you're not seeing people really pushing each other to the limit day in and day out. So I think that era is over, unfortunately. Yeah, um, a, a little bit, you know, I would say me, Ray, and Dre kind of, uh, we're definitely together, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and we do push each other now. We don't live in the same place. Right. Um, but definitely through, like, you know, conversations that we have with each other, we pretty much speak on a daily basis. Um, that's what we have. Um, and if we did live, you know, uh, it just so happened that, you know, Arnold and Frank, they just live, you know, yeah. by each other. So if we did, I believe that we would, you know, um, but it's definitely at an advantage. You know, I could say when I came here and, you know, when you see Brandon, um, you know, you just you take on a different type of energy because, yeah. you know, um, you know that you guys are both training, you know, for the same goal. Right. Um, I think that a lot of people are looking at what we're doing, you know, as far as working together. And I think that they are trying to. Um, follow that blueprint yeah um, because it's a blueprint to success if y'all don't know you know we, we ain't hurt nobody um, with it it's like you know you live over here you live over here I live over here you know we all push each other we all hold each other accountable we all lift each other up you know what I mean and that's kind of what we go by you know Neil Hill kind of has that going on right now yeah. down in Florida now yeah. a lot of people are moving to Florida first and foremost for the weather yeah. we, we know but you've got a couple of really cool gyms down there Ben Pukowski's gym so you get a lot of people training out of there. Derek Lunsford, probably yeah. leader of the pack over there. 
But then the, the Dragon's Lair, so you got Flex Lewis, you, now you got John De La Rosa down there. Mm. You know, uh, people are gravitating, and when you're able to train with other mm. high quality pros day in and day out, I don't care how hard you train by yourself, it, it, it just brings something else out of you, uh, training wise. And even more importantly, I think there's a mental aspect uh, that a lot of people are missing. They don't understand or they're, they're not realizing what a big difference that makes. Yeah, I think that those people are, I mean, to be blunt, they dumb. You know, if you can't see, like, I mean, and we see it. I think if, you know, if you look out at uh, Gold's Gym out in California, you see certain top guys, you know, they train with each other um, because, man, you can't get that same push. No. You know, because you got to think the people that you're going against, they're, they're elite too. You know, so if you get two elite mindsets and you guys are pushing each other, then once again, you continue to pull away from the pack. You know, so if you look at it and you see the same guys pretty much at the top, there's a reason why, you know, because they push harder um, than, than other people, you know, and let's just, just move over to the camaraderie part. You know, if you if you in the trenches, you know, with your friend, we, we've seen many stories, you know, uh, let's say LeBron and Dwayne Wade, you know, these dudes are, are boys, you know, and if you have that, and you push each other, once again, like I said, you will, you know, go places you probably never thought you would go. Well, a, a good athlete is good himself. A great athlete makes, makes other, other athletes around them yeah. better. Yep. I don't know how many great athletes we currently have. We have a lot of good ones. Okay. Um, I think the amount of great athletes is not as high as people would think. How come it is that now there's a lot more teams all over the country? It's been like that for the last decade. The team concept was supposed to bring unity together. I don't know how well that actually worked. Some teams, it happens very few. It's just being with a coach. When they're with a team, they're just with a coach. There are some teams that actually feed into the team aspect and have the camaraderie. Zero Gravity is the first one that comes to mind. Yeah. They've been doing it for a he long is, time. Yeah. Ryan Benson, congratulations, man. You yeah. started a culture, and you're the really, when you look at teams, you're the one who started the true team concept. They work out together. They train together. They travel together. They room together. Um, it's the same thing we've been doing over here now yeah. in, in the Midwest with underground athletes for the last few years, and it's been working. Yeah, but... Everybody don't they don't like it's preference, you know, right. if, if you're a guy that can adapt like me I can adapt I can go train by myself, but I like training, you know, like yeah. I told you I, I, I had to build myself up, you know to come here because I knew the type of energy was gonna take But I know like certain people like Andre he doesn't want to train with anybody He turns yeah. his headphones on he goes yeah. in his own and that's just him and you know, he goes into, you know, Because a lot of times a person may not train with the same intensity right. as you so it's just kind of preference, but if you do have the team aspect and you have leaders, you know, and, and put them play, then yes, everybody will, you know, benefit from it, you know. So. Well, yeah, I, I give you a perfect example. Uh, we have the luxury to have two of the best athletes in the men's physique division with two totally different leadership styles. Yeah. But man, some athletes gravitate towards the George Brown leadership style, and some gravitate towards the Brandon Hendrickson style. Good example. It's what's good for the whole yeah. you know and, and both, people, both styles are needed both styles yeah. absolutely definitely when you're talking about a team right yeah, well especially when you got a team that large yeah, yeah, true. you know uh, different people are going to pick up different things from, from different leaders now there, there's not to say if you're a guy who likes to kind of do your own thing you can be part of that team because you like that coach and you just don't have to be a part of all the stuff oh, yeah. that they do as a community you can still be a part of it and have that great leadership from that individual coach that you work well with. So you don't have to be part of the rah-rah all the time. Yeah. Um, but it does seem to, the guys that are average or slightly above average, it seems to help them more. Yeah, true. Because it really rises you their level. You got reference points. You see somebody on, on top of the team, Absolutely. then you know what you need to do. You know, so. I mean, let, let, let's, let's use a few days ago here for an example. Uh, there, was, there was 40 people here and I caused you and Brandon out to pose first, side by side, I don't think anybody blinked for five minutes. Yeah. They didn't want to miss a thing. Yeah. That, that motivated everybody. The workout after that was insane. Yeah. How could you not be motivated? You're talking about 
two of the best guys in the division. Yeah, it's, it's good now because you can see, if you look at you know people's posts on the internet right now, everybody's turned up, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it kind of got the ball rolling. We, we short, we three weeks out right now, and it's fun. You know, to me, that's the best thing. Like, if you're not having fun, then what you're doing the right. floor, you know? You know, I, I think Omar has a lot of the same stuff going on because he's got Ray and Andre. Yeah. So all the rest of those guys are really following looking suit. up yeah. and following suit to mm -hmm. those two leaders. So, again, it really proves the point that it does work. Yeah, definitely. It's just how are you, are you buying into it and what are you getting out of it? True. But that's up to you. Yeah, yeah. What we're going to talk about is... The next crop. The next crop. You know, not to say that we don't know what's going to happen or anything right. like that, but up-and-coming guys, you know, um, two guys right that I can think off of hand, Anthony Gilkis and Carlos. Yeah. You know, uh, those are two guys. And that, Anthony Cow. Cow. So those Stephen three Cow. are both doing the Arnold. Yeah. These are guys that are now trying to make a name for themselves, right? This is, they're at the level where this is the kind of show where they crack the, the first call-outs, they can crack the top five. They're instantly... I don't even just want to say famous, but they're on the map, and now they're potentially the guy to beat at any other show that they're at if that show doesn't have you, Brandon, Andre. It also lets them know that they do belong next to Brandon and Andre and, and, and Ray and George Brown. That's a, that's a stepping stone. Yeah. Ask Stephen Cow. We know Stephen Cow because he pulled up, you know, at the auto. He got that first call out. Yeah. And, you know, that just gives you the jump start, you know, because it's a lot of competitors. And so if you make it to that, you know, first call or whatever, that's you're okay. pretty much legit, you know. Absolutely. Um, but that's only for that day. Right. You know, so it doesn't mean, you know, you, you have to continue to prove yourself. You know, if you look at uh, Gilkis this year, he went out and, you know, he slugged it out until he got his qualification, you know, and he went against uh, Andre. You know, mm -hmm. he placed second a couple times to a couple heavy hitters, like real heavy hitters, you know, but he's right there. And I'm looking at him right now prepping and I know him, you know, and so I know he doesn't care about what they saying. He doesn't. Right. He's a quiet guy. Some people work. He's the guy that is at home in the basement. Why whoever's out talking shit and he's working like, oh, okay, you know, I'm gonna just keep on work. He's up at four o'clock every single day. Watch his Instagram. Carlos might have the most pressure because he just he was just in first call outs at the at the Olympia yeah. as an unknown, made somewhat of a name for himself because he was the surprise, yeah. like Chiron was the year before. Yeah. But now he's following it up with this Arnold. Well he got a win after that. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, this is these, we're talking about higher tier shows okay. against higher quality okay. athletes. Right. So now if he comes in here and he matches that again and can crack the top five That's at the Arnold. He's now legit, and he's a guy like Andrew, similar to Anthony yeah, Gilkis, yeah. where they say, you have arrived. If he, however, if he falls out of that first call out, they're going to say it was a fluke. Yeah. It was a one-hit wonder true, until true. he can prove himself again. So, you know, when, when you have an opportunity to hit that next level, it, it can be make or break. Stephen Cow did that two years ago, and then yeah. he disappeared. Yeah. He fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, true. So, so you we never gotta know. see which way guys are yeah, going to go. Yeah, you never know how it's going to go. George, how long do you think it would take a guy to get his pro card and, and find himself in that type of position? Well, kind of the fastest what we've seen is, is uh, Chiron. Chiron got his pro card. He kind of moved up pretty fast. I Overall at USA's? Yeah. Um, Anthony Gilks? Did it pretty fast. Anthony Gilkes. Overall at Junior Nationals. Yeah, yeah. I told him to go out there and snatch it, and you owe me. <laughs> so are we maybe also looking at, hey, the guys who have the ability to make that jump faster <coughs> tend to be the overall winners? Yeah, well, they're the most, obviously, they're the most prepared. That's why they get picked at the overall, you know, as overall winner. The judges know what they're doing. Right, you know? so I, I guess we need to start putting even that much more stock and looking at the overall winners from the, the top national shows Because yeah, nothing was given to year. them. For, no, for, they, they still went out and worked to right. get there, you know. Right. But they still were the overall winners, you know, so. They're in the fast lane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Fernando Chala, too. He is cooking right now. You know, just cooking. You know that I'm glad you. you oh my him. God! I, I would say the the best I saw him was in Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. Um, I, I'm a guy who's okay with looking at a at a veteran athlete. 
and giving him the nod if 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 you guys are about even. Yeah. He gave Andre everything Andre could handle in Puerto yeah. Rico. Andre came out with the win. Yeah. If Chala had won that, nobody would have argued or complained. Mm. That's how good he looked. I'm real interested to see what he's going to look like. And, and just as curious, I'm curious to see how his posing is because that's a yeah. real weakness. Right? Yeah. He doesn't have the polish. Yeah, yeah, and that lets you know the importance of it. You know? mm. So we're going to see, man. So Buwan is going to be a real interesting story. India, you've got your own guy who is moving up the ranks really quick. Uh, Buwan's with Ryan, Zero Gravity, who's a very experienced coach. So you're in great hands. You, you know that you're being taken care of and you're being properly prepared. I'm curious to see what shows he's going to do. Are we going to see him in Pittsburgh? or Chicago, or New York, I, I, I hope to, uh, Vancouver, yeah. Toronto, I want to see him at at least two of those big shows, I'm expecting a W out of him, Andre. he's got a great look, he's, he's big, um, again, he's with Ryan, who's going to who's gonna you know be sure well. he's prepared, yeah. yep. uh, I can't wait to see Buon, good luck uh, Buon, and you got a whole country on your back there. Andre Nadu, he's another one. Mm. You know, this, this is pushing on to the season. It's going to be a great season. You know, I think the Arnold's going to be a great way to kick it off, but it's going to be an interesting season. You got one, you got one more topic for us here, George. What are we, we going to end with? Uh, Kyle, you're going to have to edit it. Listen, I'm on no carbs right now. I don't Shit, know. Shit, what was the last thing we said? Classic oh, disease. Hey, hey. There the we most go. Oh. <laughs> the most of, what's up with you? This is you got carbs. You just ate. Oh, I yeah. ain't nothing, no cars. I brought enough. all the energy today. Class oh. physique is coming to men's physique. I mean, look. <laughs> the kick. All right. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. my <laughs> <laughs> Classic physique is coming to the King's Breaking Court. Breaking news. There is no more classic Breaking physique. Breaking news. Oh, yes. Boom. For, Take for it away. you guys, uh, you know, we hope you've been loving the show so far. For those of you who've been watching, there is now a bikini show. If you want to make a cameo, Sarah. I'm sure they've already seen it. Come make a, ca oh come make a cameo. Um, there's a new show, bikini show, that that uh, started a few weeks ago with Camille Perriot. Camille, I hope I said your name right. And the one and only <laughs> Miss Sarah Lyon. Oh, I like it when you say it. <laughs> you guys have already seen it. The bikini <laughs> show. The bikini show. Sure you watch it. <laughs> Shots have been there you go. It's okay. Hey, fellas, they've already surpassed our views. It's I just okay. wanted to let you guys know. But what we're doing is we're adjusting. The, the, we're making the King's Court bigger and better. The King's Court will now include the Classic Physique Division. We're also going to be broadening the spectrum uh, of our topics. We're going to start ta having international conversations. Um, George, I heard Maximum Muscle Report is expanding a little bit as well. We're, we're going to be in London this year? Bloody England, mate. Oh, hey, what do you know? Bloody rubbish, mate. Well, rubbish. Ryan Terry, we're coming to your your home. Ian yeah. Baptiste. <laughs> it was a cookie, and it had sugar, and it was a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Ian runs, uh, really, Europe. He runs He runs London. He runs uh, the U.K., Ian's a fantastic promoter, good guy. He's a little dry in his humor, so funny as hell. Uh, those of you who don't understand that dry humor, you'll be lost. Those of us yeah. can't stop cracking up. Jen Bliss, his beautiful wife, is doing a great job out there for the female athletes. You guys will start listening to the Bikini Show as well. But we will be in London three times this year, in March, in August, and in October. Thank you for the invite. London, we're coming to you. But man, this is going to be an exciting year, George. King's Court is really expanding international, bringing classic physique. Yeah. Um, classic guys going to have a platform. Um, their division is hot. And, you know, we need to show some attention to them because absolutely. they got, you know, they're, they're a big part of, you know, the league. So Right, you know. right. Well, just to discuss, they, they got a little bit of a shakeup with two of those top three guys or top four guys leaving. And it's going to be real interesting, you know. George is uh, now going on to the 212. Keon is now going on to the 212 division. 
Um, so it's going to be real, real interesting. Um, I think that's the most exciting division in the IFBB today. You've got a lot of guys gravitating towards that division. And now that it's been around a few years, you see the development of the physiques. And you have a broad spectrum uh, of physiques. Let's look at one and two last year. You had Chris Bumstead, who has one physique. And you got the ex-champ, who's got a completely different physique. Uh, Young he's, Breon. He, he's hungry to come back. Breon oh, Ansley. Yeah. Breon's is not a playing right fighter. now. Fighter. He's a man on a mission. Ooh, you know, we saw him a few weeks ago when we were out. He in said, Cali. George, let's train legs. Ooh. Heavy legs. I'm like, Breon, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he's able to take some time and really, he's reinventing himself yeah. again. He yeah. said, I can get a lot better. That's pretty interesting when a two-time Olympia champion says, I can get yeah, a better. lot better. Yeah. Um, so that'll be something to see. And we got there's a lot of other guys that are making the move in the classic physique division. So lots to talk about. There's a lot of classic physique shows. Nearly as many as men's physique this year. Yeah. So stay tuned. A lot of guests to have on. We're going to be looking to you guys to give us some ideas of what you want to hear on topics. It's the one and only King Sport, man. We got all the info that you guys need. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. And we're going to take it on home. Live That's it. from Chicago at the Bar Bell. Y'all know I'm on low cars. He's man. no cars. Take it, man. This Bar Bell Compound, the best <sighs> in the Midwest. Guys, we will see you next week. And then after that, we got something special cooking for you guys next week. And then... The week of the Arnold Classic, George has a real special surprise for you guys for the King's Court. Everybody, men's physique, classic physique, every IFBB pro show up to none other than Columbus Powerhouse Gym, the official gym of the Arnold Classic, my home, and you know, we'll have a treat for you. Till next time. Long live. The King. We're out. <laughs>